Fleur. Uh, you probably already have my intro, so I'm just going to kick straight in. We've got about 13 minutes together. And I noticed from this morning's session, there's a lot of chatter. So what I want to do is to get you, hopefully you're sitting down, but let's just take a moment to arrive. Uh, so feet flat on the floor, hands relaxed on the lap. Uh, and if you feel comfy, close your eyes. If not, just cast your eyes down, that's fine. And so taking a deep breath together, breathing in and breathing out. And I want you, as you settle in, just to think about your future you. So in about 13 minutes from now, you will have some new tools. And I want you just to think about your productivity, how it sits today. How are you going? And how can you kind of shift things up a little bit? Maybe reflecting on what you might need or perhaps what you might need to give yourself permission to do whether it's taking more breaks, whether it's planning your day, whether it's just really thinking about what you want to achieve each day. Whatever it is for you, that's great. Just reflecting, breathing in and breathing out. And when you're ready, I welcome you back into the room and we're going to get started. So you might have noticed something there, you might have had something pop up, you might have uh, thought about something, uh, you might have actually gone, you know what, all I need to do is this, you might already have the answers within you. But just in case, I just want to share some of my wisdom with you in the next now 12 minutes. So why am I standing here to share how to work smarter, not harder? Well, my why is that about 10 years ago, I got really chronically sick. In fact, I'm still chronically ill. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing my sparkles today, which always make me feel very good. Uh, but I um, had to keep showing up throughout, uh, I guess, rounds and rounds of chemo, rounds of radiation. I had to keep working and I was in a, I was in a very high performance industry and I was leading a big group of people and I needed to figure out a system on how can I actually work smarter without using all of my energy because a lot of my energy I was giving out to uh, you know trying to stay alive basically and so I created a little system I did a lot of research and I'm going to share with you my three top top tools that were game-changing for me so the three things first you got to figure out what is working smarter for you second you need to work out the three smart habits I'm going to share with you and then I'm just going to pepper some actual tips as we go through our session together around remote working, given that seems to be the world that we find ourselves in. And just some little tweaks that all of this applies to, to help you work remotely well. So the first thing is around working smarter. This is my definition of what working smarter looks like. So the first thing is around efficiency. So how you do things. So how you go about that. The second part is effectiveness, actually doing the right things. So what you do, uh, and I guess, you know, there's this always competition around urgent versus important, but also, you know, it feels like our to-do lists are ever increasing. And so I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about the three things that really work for me. The first one is around routine uh, and actually, you know, getting a clear and consistent routine uh, every day, whether it's more around the bookend, so the morning and the evening, uh, prioritization, so how you actually work through working through the noise as to what's important versus what's urgent and progress the stuff that really matters to you. And the last one's around focus. Uh, and that's really around actually getting the right things done. So the morning routine for me uh, is really kind of important. And as you can see, Tim Ferriss has this incredible saying, if you win in the morning, you win in the day. And that's certainly true for me. It's probably the most part of the day that I feel I have the most control over. Um, and so there's this thing called si Savers, which um, Hal Elrod, who's written a book called Miracle Morning, uh, has actually designed six things that you can do in the morning that will help you feel like you're progressing your day with the best possible start. Uh, and these have been, uh, I guess, tools that I've used every single day for the last year, particularly. I practice this. Um, and just quickly, silence is really around when you first wake up, having a purposeful moment. So whether it's meditation, prayer, reflection, breathing, gratitude, whatever it is for you, 
uh, but actually just taking a moment, not reaching for the phone in that first eight minutes of waking because your body is not yet awake, but just allowing yourself to actually sit in silence. The second one is around affirmation. So this is, this is around setting your attention around how you want to feel for the day. Um, and so it's really your I am statements. And here's a great, uh, I guess, bunch of tools and templates for I am statements. So check his website out. And then visualizing, that's around actually practicing, you know, positive change or results um, with your outer world by visualizing it inside your inner world. So actually thinking about, and athletes do this all the time, you know, where they're visualizing crossing the finish line. I visualized this morning, this moment with you. Um, and just sort of thinking about moments of progression in your visualization. The fourth one's around exercise, and particularly in COVID, I think getting up each morning, being amongst nature, doing something to connect our body and our mind together is really powerful. Um, reading, now this has been a great one for me in that I would have never read a personal development book, or never read 18, which is what I did last year, by actually spending 10 minutes a day reading a personal development book. I got through 18 books, 3,650 pages. I would never have done that if I hadn't focused 10 minutes in my morning before I got on with my day just to read something really positive. Some people use audio files for this instead, but I, I really like reading a book. Um, and the last one's around scribing. So that's really in terms of actually, you know, just getting your thoughts out of your brain, five to 10 minutes, just writing it out. Um, so that's kind of the first thing you can do in the morning routine. And I think given COVID, uh, probably really important stuff just before you start your day to really sit down, set your intention, work out your top three priorities, and then plan your day with that. Now, just a little remote working top tip that people have told me that they do, and I think I actually uh, am the same, is getting dressed for work. So keeping to your going to work routine um, having doing your exercise, doing your savers, but then actually getting ready for work. I don't normally wear sequins to work. I wore these for you. Uh, but actually just getting ready for work. Um, some people find that they use, um, you know, cutlery and mugs and cups and stuff that are different for their work day at home um, to what they use at night, just to kind of signal to the brain they're actually at work. The other part of kind of routine is really book ending our day. So taking the end of the day uh, before you kind of finish to actually review your progress, to see where you've got to in the day, what went well, what did you learn? Um, and then to try and capture those three things or a couple of things that you might've wanted to get done that day that didn't quite capture it. And actually, you know, making sure, so before you kickstart your next day, it's already there for you and you, have, you haven't lost it with the overnight rest. Another thing that people are doing at the moment through end of workday, which I just love, is um, to signal that's the end of workday, given their commute pretty much from the kitchen to the, to the couch, um, is actually playing a home song, going home song, while they fire off their last email. Um, other people have taken the opportunity to get changed into different to the more casual clothes. Other people have just kind of actually gone for a little walk just to break up the routine of being, you know, in the same space for 24 hours a day. <laughs> uh, the second habit, um, and hopefully you can see me okay, I'm not sure how this is going, but the um, is, is habit number two is prioritization. And this is really around that tension that we have between what's urgent and what's important. And what's important is the stuff that allows us to progress our goals. And what's urgent is the things that come in, you know, when you start your day and all of a sudden you've got five emails that you hadn't planned for, and how do you deal with those? Um, and it's making sure you prioritize the importance so you don't end up at the end of the year with them not having achieved your goals or even the end of the week for that matter. And so there's something called a most important task and some of you may have heard of this, an MIT. Um, and that's really picking out, and I, I tend to pick three a day, um, but you might just have one. What's the most important thing I need to achieve that's going to progress me towards my goal? And there's, there's oops, and there's three questions you can ask yourself. Firstly, what are the three most important things I could do today that will help me move closer to my goals? Uh, what are the three most important things I need to do that really just need to be dealt with? And if I only did those one to three things, would I be happy with my day? And then number three is how can I structure my day to get my MIT done first? And the reason for that is because you're at your most optimum in the beginning of the day, typically, if you're a morning person, but just allowing you to make sure that the day doesn't get in the way and you actually have achieved that one thing or those couple of things that you really need to get done. Now, for me, top tip, I use post-it notes. So I put my three things 
on my screen or around my screen area. So I can kind of know that as the day gets on and I get distracted and things happen, I've still got my three things. And when I do each one, I just rip it off and go, yay, I've done it. So the last habit I want to share with you is around focus. Uh, and that's around something called the power hour. Um, termed, you know, by Gretchen Rubin, who wrote the happiness, um, happiness project. So I was gonna say book, happiness project. Um, and it's really around prioritizing one hour a day where you are distraction free and you get that one dedicated task or project done. In fact, one company that I've consulted with during COVID it does that across all of their staff at two o'clock every single day and just to allow people to have space and capacity to think and get their stuff done. And so how do you do a power hour? Well, first you schedule it in, so you actually block it in. I tend to use my power hour for my most important tasks. Some people use their power hour for that one or two tasks that have sort of been sitting on their list and starting to become quite stressful and need to be dealt with. You choose the time where you're at your optimum. So when your energy, when your brain is fresh, when you feel good, when you've got your kind of energy up, um, you prepare before you go into the hour. So you take all your things. You're actually not looking for stuff when you're in that hour. And you remove all distractions. So you uh, basically switch off your phone to airplane mode. I know, shocking. Uh, or you kind of just turn off your pings on your, you know, every time you get a message. So you're kind of constantly in that hour focused on that single task. You set a timer. I just use a simple kitchen one. Um, and what I do find I need and whenever I do my power hour is a little distraction pad because it's amazing how many things bubble up in my mind that are completely not related to the task I'm on. Like, you know, I must remember to take the meat out or I've forgotten to do that. And I just put them down on my little pad to track them just so I don't forget them. I know they're there when I finish my power hour and it just allows my brain, brain to actually go, okay, it's over there. You're fine and I can stay focused. When I finish my power hour, I tick it off and I go, yoohoo, I've done it. And I try and, you know, make, I think with power hours, you need to get into a regular recurring practice. So try and make it every day that you kind of set aside one hour to do a really important task for you. And so that's the three very fast uh, work smarter habits that will, I promise you, allow you to work smart, not hard. It'll allow you to get more done rather than work longer. And we'll actually, if you can even, you know, think about one of those that we can actually start adding to your way of working, I promise you it will be a life changer. So I'm going to stop screen sharing in a second, but I want you just thinking about the formula we had, I want you to take a moment now just to do a bit of self-reflection. What is one habit, smart habit that you can commit to in the next seven days to try, to give it a go, whether it's savers, MITs, Power hour, whatever it is for you, I'd love you to take a moment. I'm just going to give you, I don't know, 15 seconds to pick a moment now.